Hey, so glad you could make it. So, are you ready to see the new Eight Sleep? This is like the biggest upgrade since they first launched. All right. I get what you're thinking. It looks exactly the same as the old Eight Sleep, and physically, it is the same. But behind the scenes, everything has changed. What's up friends, and welcome back to my channel. So I knew this day would eventually come, but I had no idea it would happen so soon. My bed is officially the smartest device in the house. Sorry, Google Home. Well, I don't care, I'm rich as so 8sleep just rolled out their new Smart Temp Autopilot feature. And what this means is that your pod can now auto-adjust itself throughout the night based on a variety of different factors, internal and external. And in this video, I'm gonna cover what those factors are and how this thing works. Plus, I've got some pretty surprising results from my time in Hawaii sleeping both with and without the 8sleep. So make sure you stick around to see the results of that sleep experiment. Now, before we dive in, just a couple of quick disclaimers. First off, if this is your first time hearing about the Eight Sleep, you might want to go back and check out my first review where I really cover all the basics, everything from the pros and cons to setup and how the Pod Pro cover actually compares to the Chili Pad. So I'll link that for you guys below. And number two, in full transparency, I do have a partnership with Eight Sleep because I freaking love their product and use it every single day. But more than just the hardware, I also fully support the company and their commitment to education and research and development in the space. They've got something great going on at that company and I am just such a fan and excited to see them grow. Now that being said, yes, I do make a small commission anytime you use my discount code, but all of the money goes straight back into this channel. And then finally, in case you guys are wondering, no special treatment here. Eight Sleep is seeing this video at the same time as all of you. So getting that all out of the way, let's start with all the updates and what's changed to the Eight Sleep platform since my first review a couple months back. And we've got to start with Sleep OS, which is, yes, Eight Sleep's custom built sleep operating system. So it was designed to connect the dots between their hardware, software, and your bedroom environment to basically help you level up your sleep game. Now I actually got a chance to beta test this before it launched and to say that I was blown away by some of the new features would be an understatement. Let's take autopilot mode for example. So yes, your pod can now auto adjust its own temperature, making the temperature of your bed warmer or cooler, depending on a variety of different factors. And these include things like your actual bedroom temperature, local weather patterns, yes, the stuff going on outside your window, and of course your past sleep history with the pod, and then just your personal sleep preferences and when you actually sleep the best. Now the goal here with this new feature is to basically enhance your overall sleep quality without you even having to think about it. You simply set, and forget and just let that pod go to work. Now, another really cool thing is that the app will actually alert you of any upcoming temperature changes to the pod if your bedroom gets, say, too hot or too cold throughout the day. And on top of that, as you'll see here, you can now adjust your pod settings to show you the real temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. I have been waiting so long for this update, you guys. I do think you have to be part of the Eight Sleep Labs program to do it, but I think it's totally free and it was a breeze to sign up. And finally, if you wake up in the morning and you just are totally not feeling those overnight temperature adjustments, there's actually a place to add your feedback straight into the app. And this supposedly helps train the algorithms to improve your future nights of sleep. Now, taking all this into account, I've got to say that the autopilot mode thing really helps solve a fundamental issue that I had, and I know a lot of you guys have had with cooling mattress pads in general. Before autopilot, I struggled getting the temperature of my eight sleep just right. Sometimes I would wake up too cold, other times I would wake up and I felt like it wasn't cold enough, but now I have this like Goldilocks situation going on with the temperature of my bed where it's like 
really comfortable and I'm not waking up multiple times hunting down a weighted blanket because I'm frigid. And it also really helps when you live in such a hot climate like Hawaii. And I've definitely seen the proof that this thing is working based on my sleep scores, which I'll get to in just a sec. But before I do, just wanna give you guys a quick breakdown of the other new updates that you will find in SleepOS. And that includes a new and improved home screen that actually changes based on what time of day you open the app. So in the morning, you'll see your sleep fitness report along with a couple of quick highlights. If you open it up midday, you're gonna find just a ton of different educational resources like breathing exercises and sleep articles. And then at night, they've made it super easy for the user because you open up the app and there is your temperature dial. You don't have to go around hunting for it. It's right there so you can make any last minute adjustments to your pod before you go to bed. And finally, they also added some new lifestyle insights around your heart rate variability. So this includes things like app alerts when your HRV falls below its normal range, or even suggestions on different ways to improve your HRV score, like, hey, maybe don't drink alcohol tonight. Anyway, I can see these tools being very useful for type A folks like myself who are definitely looking to manage stress and prioritize recovery, but not really have to do a lot of work on that. It just, the information just kind of comes to you. Moving on to sleep data, as we take a look at life without the eight sleep. Well, for a short period of time. You see, we didn't actually have our eight sleep device out here during our first month in Hawaii. And in a tropical place like Hawaii, where it's pretty hot all the time and, uh, doesn't really cool off that much at night Wait for a pretty interesting sleep experiment. So I'm excited to share all of this data with you guys, both with and without the eight sleep. And then just a quick side note, I don't know if he knows this, but uh, I'm also going to be sharing my fiance Jasper's sleep data with all of you guys right here because, well, we share a bed and he wears an aura ring and yeah, he sleeps. So that being said, I know there's a lot of data and you guys luckily didn't have to go over all of it, but I'm gonna try to keep this really fun and fast, like lightning speed. Here is a quick breakdown of what happened to our sleep during our first Hawaiian stay from late February to late March. On average, I was getting about seven and a half hours of sleep every night and Jasper was getting somewhere between six and a half and seven hours of sleep. And for sleep cycles, well, this is kind of the breakdown of what our averages looked like per night. For me, it was 22% deep, about 19% REM, 59 for light, whereas Jasper's cycle looked a little bit more like this, with 16% deep, 18% REM, about 66% light. And then finally, for recovery stats, I was averaging around 33.6 uh, for HRV. Not my best work, guys, I get that. Heart rate dipped down to about 56, and then a 0.08 temperature deviation. As for Jasper, also not a champion on the HRV front with a 33.3, about 51.5 for our lowest heart rate, and then a negative 0.008 temperature deviation. Now fast forward a month later, and so this is what round two looks like, this time with the eight sleep. Surprisingly, I was still getting about seven and a half hours of sleep, but this time Jasper's new work schedule meant that he was getting just shy of about six hours each night. Now in terms of our sleep cycles, here's where you start to see the actual shift. So for me, my deep sleep went from 22 without the eight sleep to 29% with the eight sleep, 18.6 to 23% for REM, about 59 for light to 48%. And that's a good thing because you don't want to have a lot of light sleep. You want to see that number go down. Now I was pretty happy with my own changes, but I gotta say Jasper's stats were even more impressive than mine. So let's take a look. He got an almost 10% increase in his deep sleep from 16% without the eight sleep to 24.2 with it. He got a small spike in his REM sleep from 17.6 to 20%. A nice little decrease in that light sleep score from 66 to 56. Now we will note that we didn't really see any big changes to our heart rate or HRV scores. Sometimes those stats take a little bit longer to actually see any big improvements, but we did see some major shifts in our overall body temperature, not surprised. Now, the most impressive thing about Jasper's scores is that his total sleep time went down by a lot 
and yet his sleep quality went up. And so what that tells me is that he wasn't necessarily sleeping longer, just more efficiently at least according to his aura ring. And the same thing could be said for my scores as well. As you saw, my total sleep time didn't really go up or down, and yet my REM and deep sleep scores both saw some improvements in the right direction. Now for good measure, I also wore my Dream 2 for a portion of this experiment to basically see how the data compared. And so here are those results side by side. So for light sleep, my average actually stayed exactly the same, both with and without the eight sleep at 40.8%, I kid you not. And then in terms of REM and deep sleep scores, I did see some small improvements with the eight sleep, albeit minor ones. My average deep score went up one percentage point with the eight sleep, jumping from 27.2 to 28.2%. And then my average REM went up two percentage points from 21.3% to 23.2%. Now granted these certainly aren't jaw dropping changes, I agree, but that might be because my dream experiment took place over a much shorter period of time, only two weeks versus eight weeks with the aura ring. And you're probably wondering why, and I have to be honest, I love the dream for its accuracy, but it is still kind of a pain to wear at night. So I wanted to get some data in for you guys, and I figured that two weeks was better than no weeks. I hope that's okay. So that being said, and Funny enough, I did actually see some bigger changes to a couple of other stats on my Dream 2, including position changes and total efficiency. So after looking at my Dream data, my average sleep was actually 3% more efficient with the eight sleep than without. And I was a heck of a lot less restless with the eight sleep. I was only moving around less than 20 times versus not having the eight sleep. And your girl was moving around like 30 plus times a night. And finally, let's quickly take like one second to talk about how Eight Sleep's own built-in sleep tracker actually compares to both the Aura Ring and the Dream 2 data, because I found this to be pretty interesting. So on average, compared to the Aura Ring and the Dream 2, Eight Sleep undershot my deep sleep score by around nine percentage points each night. And we're talking same exact time frame here. And a similar thing happened to REM with the eight sleep undershooting my total REM score by about five percentage points again each night. Not to mention there were also like a handful of nights in which I just didn't get any sleep cycle data from the eight sleep device. So not entirely sure what happened there. So yes, they have a sleep tracking feature, but is it perfect? Certainly not, but it's definitely something that they're actively working on and looking to improve. For now, it's definitely a nice to have, but for me, I personally lean on it more for bigger sleep trends versus minute day-to-day -day accuracy. So finally, thank you guys for bearing with me and all my data. And wrapping up, as you know, I I've been a big fan of cooling mattress pads for sleep for quite some time now. It all started with the somewhat noisy chili pad back in the day, and now I've upgraded and I'm absolutely in love with the Eight Sleep. But the reason I love them as a category in general is that there are very few devices out there that can really make that profound of an impact on your sleep in such a fast amount of time. And now with these awesome new features like autopilot mode, I think that the technology is only going to get better from here. Now I get it, these devices are definitely expensive and the eight sleep is certainly no exception, but I'm telling you guys, I would probably trade in all of my various sleep tracking gadgets just to have this one thing in my life. And yes, you can quote me on that. And it's because I've seen the sleep results time after time. And I know that this is a long-term investment, but it's only gonna get better with time. And so if you're on the fence, hopefully my discount code can also help cut down the cost there too. Now, that being said, if you don't have room in your budget for the eight sleep right now, totally get it doesn't mean you still have to suffer through summer sweating. So here are a couple of free tips and alternative things that you can do to help keep your body cool as you get ready for bed in the hot summer months. Avoiding exercise close to bed. Put your pillowcase in the freezer. I know that sounds a little weird, but trust me, definitely works. You, you're gonna want to take the pillowcase out of the freezer before you go to bed and put on your pillow. I also still use blackout curtains during the day to actually help keep out some of the heat from being trapped in the room. So that is another great tool. And then yes, I get this is going to sound surprising, but bear with me, take a warm bath before you go to bed. I know, sounds really counterintuitive. Why wouldn't you just take a cold shower? 
Well, here's the reason. You get out of the warm bath, and immediately your body is starting to adjust its temperature. It's starting to cool down. It's also signaling to your body, hey, it's time to go to sleep. We're cooling down. So give it a try. Let me know. You might still want to take a cold shower, but sometimes a warm bath can do the trick as well. So I hope you found those tools helpful and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Oh my God, I can't believe we're finally at the end. That was a long one, <laughs> but there was so much to unpack months worth of data. And I hope that you guys found this relevant and useful. And if you like this video, if you learned something, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the eight sleep. If you have it, if you're thinking about getting one and as always, make sure you click that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and hit that notification bell. So you get notified every week when I drop a new video. I miss you guys. I'm so happy to be back and it took some time to fully rest and recharge, but I am back 2021. Here we go. Love you guys. Thanks again so much for watching. And I cannot wait to catch you on the next one.